Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, we gather on this uh, second day of our novena to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And as it has been usual, we begin by giving thanks to God for the many different blessings, the many different graces that God continues to render us in our own lives. And we also say that we are challenged people, we are troubled people, and so we also gather to present these challenges to God in order that God may receive them and bless them. And for those days, for those times, for those moments when we have experienced spiritual relapses, so we can say, let us ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have felt to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who decreed that St. Barnabas, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, should be set apart to convert the nations, grant that the gospel of Christ, which he strenuously preached, may be faithfully proclaimed by word and by deed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 14, verses 4 to 11. Chapter 14 of Exodus, verses 4 to 11. Thus I will make Pharaoh so obstinate that he will pursue them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. This the Israelites did. When it was reported to the king of Egypt that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his servants changed their minds about them. What have we done? They exclaimed. Why? We have released Israel from our service. So Pharaoh made his chariots ready, mustered his soldiers, 600 first class chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with warriors on them all. So obstinate had the Lord made Pharaoh that he pursued the Israelites even while they were marching away in triumph. The Egyptians then pursued them. Pharaoh's whole army, his horses, chariots, and charioteers caught up with them as they lay encamped by the sea. At Fiharu, Pharaoh in front of Belsopha. Pharaoh was already near when the Israelites looked up and saw that the Egyptians were on the march in pursuit of them. In great flight they cried out to the Lord and they complained to Moses. Were there no burial places in Egypt that you had to bring us out here to die in the desert? Why did you do this to us? Why did you bring us out of Egypt? The word of the Lord. Help me 
path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. 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 Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in life we sometimes experience what we may refer to as spiritual lapses. What we may refer to as relapses of the heart. These relapses are experienced in many different ways. We can take for an example a man or a woman who decides to give up on alcohol, knowing that alcohol is bringing a lot of harm to him or her. And so he or her makes a resolution to give up on alcohol. And when they do that, indeed they do it, they give up on alcohol, 
But after some time, they find themselves getting back to hit the bottom once again. And so we say that they have relapsed. For some moment, they had realized the evil, the shortcoming that they were going through in their lives and tried by the grace of God to sort out their situation and all of a sudden they found themselves, they find themselves going back on what they had resolved. And in that way, people fall, and sometimes the fall can be hard indeed. And so in life, dear sisters and brothers, we do experience different types of relapses. We can take even as another example, a boy and a girl, a young man and a young woman, who are in courtship, perhaps with a view towards getting married. And as they move along in courtship, they probably realize that they are not meant for one another. Or at least one of them realizes that the other was not meant for him or for her. And to straighten matters, they might decide to pull out of that relationship in order that they may serve God better, in order that they may praise God better, because they are working towards happiness in their lives. But then along the way, it can happen that an evil spirit comes back to tempt them and they go back in that relationship in which they are well aware that they are not meant for one another. And even in that case, my dear brothers and sisters, we can say that there's a kind of relapse something that we can call a spiritual relapse, something that we can refer to as uh, the relapse of the heart. And they then force matters and decide to stick together. And the consequences may not be so good because they have not put God in front of them. They have put God behind them and gone before God to do their own will and not the will of God. And when we put ourselves before God, when we put God behind us, we are bound to experience spiritual relapses which lead to no good. In the first reading of today that we heard from the book of Exodus, we can say that Pharaoh and the people of Egypt have experienced this spiritual relapse. They have had a change of heart in as much as they decide to pursue the Israelites whom they had earlier on freed. Of course, they decided to go on the wrong, on the right path when they saw the wonders that God performed in Egypt. Somehow, they experienced some conversion of heart. And having experienced that conversion of heart, 
through the powers that God manifested before them, they decided to allow the Israelites to go free. But when they saw that the Israelites had gone free, the Israelites were wandering about in the wilderness, they had a change of heart. They had a change of mind. They had a spiritual relapse. And then they decided to pursue the sons and daughters of Israel in order that they may hold them back into bondage once again. We can say that it is not only Pharaoh and his armies and the Egyptians that undergo a spiritual kind of relapse in this first reading that we heard today. We can also say that the sons and daughters of Israel also experience a spiritual relapse because when they realize that the chariots, that the armies of Pharaoh are pursuing them, they feel that they cannot escape in any way. They feel that they are finished, they are done, they are going to die there. They experience a spiritual relapse in as much as they forget the wonders that God had done for them, the wonders that God had just done for them in the land of uh, Egypt. And so they begin to complain. And so their faith weakens. And so their hearts harden as they complain to Moses and they say, why have you brought us here in order that we may die in the wilderness? Are there no burial places where we have come from in Egypt? It would have been better for us to die in Egypt. Why do you bring us here to die in the wilderness? A spiritual relapse, dear brothers and sisters, that the sons and daughters of Israel are also experiencing. A spiritual relapse that comes about when we become so confident that we put God behind us. When we become so self-confident that we put ourselves before God as if everything depends on us. As if everything depends on our own powers. As if we ourselves are gods, forgetting that we are actually creatures of God. And when we act thus, in life, then we can experience dire situations, troublesome situations, difficulties, challenges in life. Sisters and brothers, this very thing of spiritual relapses is a theme that we also encounter in the gospel of today. <coughs> the gospel that we heard from Matthew. The explanation of the parable of uh, the soul. And we are told in the first place that that seed that fell along the path is like those people 
who just hear the word of God, but they do not understand it. And the evil one comes and steals that word from the heart. They receive the word of God, but they cannot sustain it. They receive the word of God in their heart, but they do not understand it. They do not put it into practice. And when that happens, they experience relapsed hearts, they experienced, they experienced spiritual relapses in as much as the evil one comes and steals that word from their hearts. And the degree of relapsing differs in person and person. And so some persons are like that seed that fell on a rocky ground, on rocky ground. They do not take root. They are choked by the sun. They relax because time and again they put themselves before God. They put themselves ahead of God. They put God behind them. They are not like those sons and daughters of Israel who would very often have God in form of the cloud leading them by day towards uh, the promised land. Like fire also leading them by night towards that promised land. Such people fail to focus on God. And perhaps that is a solution that we can propose today against these relapsed hearts, against this spiritual relapse that we have before us all the time in everything that we do, that image of God that goes behind us, that cloud of God, that fire of God that leads us. Let us remain focused on that fire, on that image of God in order that our hearts may not be hardened. And it is only when we exercise such that we bear fruit. For that is why the Lord created us, in order that we may bear fruit, as we heard in the gospel of today, a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. That is also part of our existence, that we produce fruit, that we give out love, that we give out peace, that we give out healing to everyone that we encounter in our own lives. And in that way, God does not only bless us, but also blesses those whom we encounter. And so, dear sisters and brothers, let us pray for this grace that the Lord may guard us from spiritual relapses. Dear sisters and brothers, I now invite you to 
recite the Novena prayer. O most holy heart of Jesus, fountain of every blessing, I adore you, I love you, and with a lively sorrow for my sins, I offer you this poor heart of mine. Make me humble, patient, and pure, and wholly obedient to thy will. Grant, good Jesus, that I may live in you and for you. Protect me in the midst of danger. Comfort me in my afflictions. Give health of body, assistance in my temporal needs, your blessing on all that I do, and the grace of the holy death. Hear the intentions I bring to this novel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Yes, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Sanctify with your blessing, we pray, O Lord, the offerings presented here, so that by your grace they may set us on fire with the flame of your love, by which St. Barnabas brought the light of the gospel to the nations, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds, 
to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which is given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chance, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alec, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Rest us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life. We now say the act of spiritual communion for those who are not able to receive the body and blood of Christ physically. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray.
As we receive the pledge of eternal life, we humbly implore you, Lord, that what we celebrate in sacramental signs on the memorial of the blessed apostle Barnabas, we may one day behold unveiled. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.